I want to dive in now to week two of our series as we continue to talk about exiting COVID. Exiting COVID, we don't know when, but we know we will. And we want to exit COVID better on the other side. And so we've been talking about a couple of things. The first thing is this, is that how you exit, how I exit one season is how I enter the next Uh, Pastor John, my friend Pastor John sent me a picture of LeBron. This was on LeBron's Instagram page. And LeBron is at home, and this is what LeBron is doing in his spare time. He's He's getting ready. So when Adam Silver makes the announcement, when Adam Silver gives LeBron a call and says, hey, the season is on, LeBron is saying, I am preparing myself now to be ready for when the season opens back up. And again, we don't... We don't know. It may be next week. It may be next year. But LeBron says, if it opens, I'm going to be ready. So LeBron is not on his couch eating Doritos and binge, uh, binge watching Netflix. And then the call from Adam Silver comes and he all of a sudden, boom, I'm in game shape. No, you've got to prepare yourself now during this season so that when things open back up and I want my job, my assignment is to preach you into game shape. I'm going to preach you into game shape because I'm telling you, you're better on the other side of this. You're stronger. You have more faith. You're more generous. Your praise is deeper. I see you on the other side and yet you cannot wait until you get to the other side. You've got to start now. So last week we talked about how do we want to exit COVID? I want to exit COVID praising. I want a posture of praise. When that cell door opens and and, and when that opens wide, I don't want God to find me complaining. I don't want him to find me negative. I don't want him to find me hurt or bitter or rehearsing offenses or going over in my mind all that could have been. I'm coming out praising. Come on, somebody. And I'm not going to come out praising if I don't start praising. So I choose, I choose midnight praise because that's the other thing. When everything else is taken from us, we may not choose what happens to us, but we choose our response. And so we not only choose a 6 p.m. praise, which is a praise when everything goes right for us. No, we choose a midnight praise that is praise at a deeper level even at midnight. And today I want to preach to you about this. I choose overflowing generosity. I choose overflowing generosity. See, when it comes to generosity, you can have a couple of mindsets. You can have a scarcity mindset or you can have an overflowing mindset. Here's what a scarcity mindset is. A scarcity mindset hoards and consumes what you have in times of crisis. A scarcity mindset says there's only so much and I'm going to get mine. So I better hold on to it or I better spend it or I better accumulate stuff. An overflow mindset pours what you have in times of crisis. So let me just get real practical. A a scarcity mindset, when you got your stimulus check, a scarcity mindset went out and immediately bought a new television and just hoarded the rest and didn't give a set. Sent an overflow mindset, said, who can I bless? Who can I buy some groceries? Here's my tithe before I do everything else. Pastor, you're being a little bit real. Well, I'm telling you, you need somebody to be real in your life. You don't need, this is not a time where you need a pastor to candy coat and sugar coat things. You need somebody that's going to speak deep truth and not skirt around biblical issues. But here's the thing. You can use this opportunity to go from a poverty mentality and a scarcity mindset to where you say, Doug, my family has always, we've, ne- we've always had lack. We've always been scared. The paycheck 
check comes and I don't even know where it went. I couldn't follow our expenses. I don't know how much we spend on this. No, you are going to move. You're going to shift right now in the name of Jesus from a scarcity mindset to an overflow mindset. You're going to change your family tree right now in the name of Jesus. Your children are going to live blessed and their children I have, your children's children are going to live blessed and you're, gonna, you're going to begin to live in overflow. You're going to begin to live in abundance. You're going to begin to live in financial peace in the name of Jesus because choices that you make during defining moments in your life will stay with you for generations. I believe, I believe, and I need to do the research on this. It's a hunch. I bet there's some science that can back me up that choices that we make in the midst of crisis can sometimes be the things that set us forward or back for the next season. And I want you to choose overflowing generosity. Our narrative that we're gonna be flowing through today comes out of 2 Kings chapter four. And let me begin the story. One day, a widow of the member of the group of prophets came to Elisha and cried out, my husband who served you is dead. And you know that he feared the Lord, but now a creditor has come threatening to take my two sons as slaves. I want somebody to notice and somebody needs to hear this. The church, sometimes bad things happen to good people. This person was a servant of the Lord. He was a prophet. He was studying for ministry. This was a family that was in ministry. And the crisis of the day, which was a famine, hit people that were not serving God and it hit people that were serving God. And somebody needs to be reminded today that is serving God and tithing and in ministry. And you lost your job that God God has not left you. God's not abandoned you. Your anointing is not gone. All of that sometimes, sometimes bad things can happen to good people. We are not immune as the people of God. We are not immune to times of famine, but there is provision in times of famine. And I'm going to preach you. I'm going to preach you into provision. And so to operate in this overflowing generosity, I want you to jot a couple of things down as you're taking notes. And I know that you're taking notes. Begin, begin, number one, begin with what's in the house. Begin with what's in the house. Verse two, what can I do to help you? Elisha asked, tell me, what do you have in the house? Nothing at all except. She says nothing. If you've got a, a paper copy of God's word, I want you to circle that word nothing. And then I want you to circle the word except. Nothing except because do you see the beginning of the change of mindset? She is beginning to go from a scarcity mindset to an overflow mindset. And it begins with one difference of one word, nothing except. Here's what I know that the enemy wants for you during this season. The enemy wants to, you to focus on the nothing. I don't have this. I've lost this. This is closed. This is shut down. I can't do this anymore. I haven't seen this person. No, stop in the name of Jesus nothing except. I want you to move. I want you to shift to accept. You got something. Come on, say that out loud. I got something. I've got an accept. Except I lost my job. Except I got an idea. Except I've got a relationship. Except I've got a connection. Except I've got provision. Except you have an accept. And God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, right now is going to begin to shift your mindset from a nothing mindset that is focused on all that is wrong in the world to an accept. Come on, I'm preaching an accept into somebody's situation and into somebody's living room today. Accept. Everything has been taken from me. Accept Jesus. If, you're, if your accept is Jesus, then you got a big, big accept. You got a powerful accept. I got nothing 
accept. And then somebody needs to know this. Your miracle is already in the house. Elisha looks to the widow and he doesn't say, he doesn't say, look out your window. He doesn't say, look at your neighbor. He doesn't say, compare your job to somebody else's. He doesn't say, hey, hey, that person, that person, their husband is still living. If God loved you, all, all of those things, right, that the enemy will feed your mind and flood your mind during times of crisis. The enemy uh, will use your own internal monologue and he'll put it on overdrive. No, Elisha said this. Your miracle is already in the house. Can I encourage you that I believe your miracle is already in the house? Here's what we do. We have the propensity to look at other people's lives, other people's stuff, other people's situation. And when you do that from a distance, everything looks better than what you got. Everything looks. So this is a picture of my neighbor's field. And it's one that before I turn into my driveway, it's the last side. I love the field and I love, and, and I don't even really feel like this picture does it justice because during April and the beginning of May, the yellow comes out. I don't even know what it is, but it's yellow, it's gold, it's vibrant. And so when the sun hits that, it's absolutely beautiful. It looks perfect. And, and you can't see in the picture, but it's a, a gorgeous, just two-story wooden barn at the end of that. And the, the white fence and all, all of that. And from a, from, a dis, from a distance, everything looks perfect. And yet, if you just look down, you'll find, you'll find well, you'll find in that field that there's, there's some stuff in the field, and here's what I know, that when you look at anything, when you look at anything from a distance, it might look perfect. But when you get up close, there's some stuff. And so what happens, can I, can I just tell you this? Anything in life worth having, there's some stuff in the field. You got to walk through some stuff in the field. And we can, if we're not careful during this season, we'll look out on some, oh, I wish I had somebody else's house. I wish I had their job. I wish I had their kids. I wish I had their degree. I wish I had their bank account. I wish, I wish, and we will want somebody else's field and not realize that there's some stuff in their field and also not realize that your miracle is not in your neighbor's field. Your miracle is in your house. And can I tell you that one of the things, one of the things that Jesus may be doing during this season of quarantine, during this season of shelter at home is remind you what you You've got somebody needs to look around their living room right now and be reminded what you have. Somebody needs to, as the old hymn says, count your blessings, name them one by one. Your miracle is not, not out there. Your miracle is all ready in the house. The second thing is this, to operate in overflowing generosity, we got we to gotta have some shut the door moments. You, you, you got to have some shut the door moments. See, in verse 3, Elisha says this. He says, borrow as many empty jars as you can from your friends and neighbors. Let me say this. It is not a lack of dignity to ask for help from friends and neighbors and your church during a time of crisis. Do you hear me? That's what your relatives are for. The Bible says start in the family, start in and then, and then your church family. That's what the church is for. That's what your tribe is for. Do not let a false sense of pride stop you from asking for help if you need help during a time of crisis. Verse four, then go into your house with your sons and shut the door. Go into your house with your sons. Don't you think that this is a defining moment for her boys? 
That, that piece that Pastor Jerry and the team put together earlier was so powerful. I, lo- I love, I love the picture. I, I, I wouldn't wish this on anybody. Don't, he, don't, don't, hear, don't hear me wrong. This is, this is horrible. It's evil. It's not from God. Disease is, is from the enemy. God didn't cause it, but he can use it. And I believe that God will use this to shape Generation Z in a positive way. I'm telling you, these two boys, boys these two boys had an encounter when mama shut the door they knew that mama was up to business they 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 knew that she was going to hit her knees and begin to cry out to God and I believe that that moment of seeing how their parent reacted during a time of crisis set the flow of prayer and generosity for the rest of their lives generation z let your pastor speak over you you are going to be better on the other side. You're going to be tougher. You're going to be stronger. You are not going to be entitled. The only thing you're entitled to is a job and a prayer closet. Come on, Generation Z, you're going to rise up. You're going to be the next great generation, the next World War II generation. This is going to define your character and you're going to rise up and I see the next generation coming out of this generous, coming out of this, leading us into revival. And so parents, I want to encourage you. Your kids are seeing a lot of different sides of you right now because they're seeing more of you than they've ever seen. And they're going to see the flaws and they're going to see some frustration. They're going to see that's part, that's part of this stuff that when you get close to any field, it's in any field, any field has some stuff But watch this, parents, don't miss this as an opportunity to have some shut the door moments with your kids and saying, kids, we're going after God. We're praying. We're believing for provision. God is not going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us. It's a defining moment. And then to operate in overflowing generosity, here's the final thing. We have to pour our way from lack to overflow. We got to pour our way from lack to overflow. Can I, can I encourage someone that feels like you're running on empty? Maybe you feel like you're, you're running on fumes, you're running on empty, the, the frontline worker who comes home and you don't feel like you have anything left to give for your family, you're homeschooling your kids and, and your spouse comes home from work and you're a little bit short with your spouse, the leader who's trying to lead an, an entire multi-layered, multi-employee business or, or a company from behind a camera and a, and a Zoom meeting, the extrovert who needs to be around people, the, the person who is craving just some physical touch, you lost your job or your job is going bananas and you're working 70 hours a week and you feel like you're running on empty. Listen to your pastor. You don't need to run on empty anymore. You just need to pour on empty. You need to pour on empty because there's a difference. Elisha says this. He says, pour olive oil. Pour olive oil from your flask. Pour olive oil. Can you imagine how ridiculous that that sounded to the widow? Can you imagine the scarcity mindset and the poverty spirit that was probably warring through her every thought in that moment? Poor poor? Are you kidding me, Elisha? We're in national, and Elisha, in case you didn't watch the news, we're in the middle of a crisis and you're telling me to pour? Elisha, in case you haven't checked, my husband is dead and the creditors are knocking on the door. Elisha, in case you haven't looked in my jar, I'm down to my last bit of oil. How dare you, Elisha, how dare you tell me 
to pour. And yet that wasn't her response. Her response was a response. I don't know how she felt, but she acted in faith. Do you know that you don't have to feel it to act in faith? Sometimes faith is an act of obedience when you don't feel it at all. Sometimes it's giving when you're scared. Sometimes it's writing the tithe on the giving online when you don't know where the groceries are coming from. Poor, poor. Do you know how? Do you know how I believe maybe, maybe the widow was able to pour? You you see what's connected to this jar, don't you? Oh, well, well, maybe, maybe you don't because it's invisible. But, but I promise you it's there. I promise you it's there. See, see, in every jar of life, there's an invisible hose. There's an invisible cylinder that comes out of the bottom of the jar. And it's connected to the resource of heaven. But the thing is, it's not activated while it's sitting still. It's only activated. There's a little fla- there's a little flapper, there's a little stopper in there. And that stopper is only activated. It only opens up when I begin, when I begin to pour. When I begin to pour, when I'm scared and I still pour, when I'm lonely and I still pour. And as she began to pour, what she did is she activated the flow of heaven. She activated the resources of heaven. She understood, let me give you a spiritual law. It's called the law of the oil, the law of the oil. And it simply goes like this, the law of pouring oil, if you lack oil, pour oil oil. In other words, whatever you lack, pour that. If you lack joy, start pouring some joy into somebody else's life. If you lack peace in your home, start speaking words of peace into somebody else's life. If you lack finances, begin to pour finances. It's the law of the oil and whatever you lack, you begin to pour that and you tap into the resources of heaven. Because I'm telling you, what do you have to lose? All you got is a little bit of oil anyways. It's going to run out anyways. So I'm about to preach. What do you got to lose? If you don't have anything to lose, you're actually in a really good spot. Because this is set up for a miracle. If you're in a place where only God can come through, then you're in a great place. Because only God is going to come through. And God is going to get the praise on the other side. God's going to get the glory on the other side. Your job isn't going to to get the glory. Your boss isn't going to get the glory. Your degree isn't going to get the glory. God's going to get the glory. I need somebody to begin to believe for things in your life and in your situation that only God can do, that only God can provide. I want to come out of this thing on the other side with some COVID miracles in my life that have accessed the flow of heaven into my situation. I was, I was weed eating last week and, and I saw that I saw this coming. I knew this was coming, but I kept, I kept pushing the limits. I kept pushing the limits. By the way, if you think something's good in your life, just go try to go outside and try to do yard work and start something. I like start a weed eater that's been sitting all winter. Start, start, start your blower. Start your lawnmower. Start your chainsaw. Right? That'll that'll put your faith to the test. And so I knew my weed eater has what a lot of uh, a lot of these types of of lawn equipment tools have. It has a, a priming bulb. It has a priming bulb. I know. I don't know if the camera can can zoom in on here and I'll try and be still, but it has a little priming bulb. And this bulb is connected. It connects the source of your fuel to something. 
and I probably should have researched what's on the other side of that because it would have made me sound smart like I know a little bit of something about small engines and I don't so it connects the fuel to the stuff in the engine that makes the engine run there how's that for for making your pastor sound real smart but all I know what I know is that there's a little hose that goes into a little chamber and the, there's a priming bulb and you got to press you got to press this bulb four, five, six times. And by doing that, it gets the fuel flowing. See, everything on the other side of this priming bulb can be in perfect operation. It, the, the motor, the carburetor, the filters, the, everything can be fine. You can have at the other end of your weed eater, you can have your, your, your string, your weed eater cord all wrapped and it can not be jammed and it can be perfect. But this priming bulb had not just one, one crack, but it had multiple cracks and it was, it was split open. And I would try to like cover everything with my thumb and so I could create that vacuum and get the fuel flowing. Well, last weekend, it finally, it finally couldn't do it anymore. And the entire weed eater didn't run correctly just because I couldn't access the flow. See, there was plenty of fuel, but I couldn't access the flow. Do you know what this priming bulb is in your life? It's called generosity. And generosity begins with returning the tithe to the Lord. Pastor, why are you preaching about the tithe? Don't you know that more lost people are watching this than ever before? No, please hear me. Please hear me. You don't want a pastor that knows how to access the resources of heaven and doesn't tell you, you don't want that. I would be so cruel during a time of economic crisis not to teach you biblically how to access the resources of heaven. And I'm telling you, you this is the key to the flow. Everything on the other side will begin to work. Everything, I'm not saying that tomorrow, I'm just saying in general, life works when we begin to access overflowing generosity. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Somebody's gonna shift their mindset right now. Right now, I don't know what you're staring at. You may, may be staring at lack. You may be staring at feel, uh, fear. You may be staring at anxiety. Maybe, maybe you're on the other side. Maybe you got, maybe you're one of the neighbors that, got all, that has all kinds of jars right now. Hey, don't you, don't you love this? Don't you love this? There's actually two people that give in this story. The, the widow pours out of her lack but the neighbors give jars out of their overflow. I know I said I was about to pray, but this is a word, this is a word for somebody. Some of, some of you feel like you're the widow and you're down to one jar with a little bit of oil. Some of you have a job that's going crazy during the season. Some of you are getting bonuses like crazy during the season and you got more joy, jars than you know what to do with. So watch how, watch how the body of Christ does this. Those that have extra jars give their extra jars and those with lack give out of their lack and it all accesses, it comes together Together and it works together to access the same resource of heaven. Now, for real this time, with heads bowed and eyes closed, somebody just needs to make a decision. Pastor, I'm coming out of this not with a scarcity mindset. I'm coming out of this not with a poverty spirit. I am coming out of this not just generous, but overflowingly exceeding generous. I'm going to start to tithe. I'm going to start you might as well. Here's what the tithe is. It says, God, I trust you. None of it is mine anyway. 
place. It's all yours. And I want to access, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I bless somebody with the resources of heaven. I bless them to tap into a flow that they didn't even know that was there. And this is so much, this is about so much more than money. I bless somebody to tap, to tap in to a source of joy that they didn't even know was there, to tap into a source of peace that they didn't even realize existed, to tap into a source of provision that they didn't know could be possible. I bless them in the name of Jesus to live wide awake to the love of God and fully alive to their purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much for joining with us today. We're so glad that you're here. If you made a decision to follow Christ for the first time, we'd love to talk with you, maybe answer some questions, and we even have a gift that we'd love to give you. Text ALIVE to 94000 and someone will be in touch with you shortly. If this is your first time with us, you're our VIP. If you haven't already followed us on social media, make sure you do that. You can get information about what's going on all throughout the week, and you can also ask any question or comment that you want, and we'll be glad to respond to that. Because of your generosity, we've already been able to meet many of the needs in our community. But we know that with this pandemic, that after this is over, the need is going to be greater than ever before. One of the ways you can partner with us in meeting the needs of our community is by giving. You can mail your checks, or you can text CFA to 73256, or go to cfachurch.com slash give. Thank you so much for what you've already done. Will you continue to make a difference in the kingdom of God through your generosity? So now that we're living in the reality of a quarantine, it's more important to recognize that we're not designed to do this alone. So go to cfachurch.com slash groups. There you can find a tribe of people that you can do life together with. Many of them are still meeting digitally, and we want to make sure that you're a part of that. Make sure you take the time to share this on social media so that more people can hear the message of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for being with us. We'll see you again soon.